And a good shower certainly helps. These seven minutes will almost certainly be my only alone and quiet time this morning, so I think through the day, starting with the kids' assignments. We're in our first year of hybrid homeschooling. Three days of classes at school with teachers and other kids, two days at home with me and their siblings. I used to homeschool full-time until work started to pick up, and being both a homeschooling mom and a work-at-home mom, two mutually exclusive roles, became impossible. Work, for me, isn't easily defined. I write about foster care on the internet, I host a podcast, I speak at conferences. I also own a business that sells products that center around and benefit foster care. And I'm the founder and executive director of a nonprofit organization that serves local foster families. It's a little bit of a lot of different things, but it all centers around this one thing, foster care. When I became a foster parent seven years ago, I never could have known how it would take over every part of my life. I write and talk about, fundraise, plan, encourage, and strategize for, and live foster care all day, every day. My husband and I talked about adoption in a probably one day sort of way ever since I met and fell in love with him at the ripe old age of 14. But 10 years in, we hadn't taken any steps. When my brother and sister-in-law adopted through foster care, we thought they were crazy. But God used them and others, along with books and scripture, to convict and convince us. We signed on with unnervous on Alan's part and excited on my part, willingness to accept one healthy child at a time on a very day-by-day sort of basis. We were going to try this thing out, see how it went. 24 kids of various ages, two adoptions, and an array of medical needs, behavioral issues, and circumstances later, I'd say we're pretty much in it for life. We approached our yes to foster care with our two biological kids, Liv and Wes, five and two at the time, in tow. Since then, our family has permanently grown by two more through the adoption of two of our foster daughters, Bella and Em. Our house has three open beds that are almost always taken up by one or two other kids as the need arises. If you're counting, that's four to six kids four forever children, and one or two temporary foster children. Right now, the lineup of our five kids includes Liv, 12, biological, Wes, 9, biological, Bella, 7, adopted from foster care, M, 6, adopted from foster care, and Jovi, 2, foster. I typically subscribe to a labels don't matter, there are kids mindset, but for our purposes in these chapters, I think the distinction is helpful. As I jump out of the shower and throw on my at-home uniform of yoga pants and a tee, I get a text from the toddler's lawyer. Are you available for a video conference today at 2? I set a timer on my phone for 1.45 before even responding with yes. I completely forgot about the video conference that was scheduled for last Friday, and I can't let that happen again. Once may be forgivable, but twice is not. One thing is for sure, all the appointments and paperwork of foster care have confronted my forgetful, disorganized self head-on. I get everyone dressed and fed semi-successfully. Yes, one kid's sensory processing issues meant we had a 15-minute meltdown because the only pair of acceptable pants, despite the eight pairs of perfectly fine pants sitting in the dresser, was sopping wet in the washer. And yes, one of the kids hid in the kitchen cabinet nowhere to be found when they heard a social worker would be visiting. And yes, the toddler threw an entire tray of food onto the ground while repeating, In mockery of me, I'm convinced, as I'm on my hands and knees cleaning it up, uh uh-oh, 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 but they're all dressed and fed. As I get the big kids started on their schoolwork, there's a knock on the door. The crisis mental health worker, a 20-something guy wearing a Star Wars t-shirt, pulls one kid into the dining room. They talk behaviors and stressors and goals until the conversation eventually develops.